Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are working on the second Maiden's Tragedy and we get to hear from Votarius again today in Act 1, Scene 2. Votarius is in the middle of kind of sort of hitting on Anselmus' wife. Anselmus wants to know whether or not his wife is truly chaste and faithful. So he's asked Votarius to hit on her to see if she's given an opportunity to cheat, would she do so, or is she actually faithful? And Votarius' first attempt was honestly kind of pathetic. So Anselmus is like, you know what, I'm going to leave town for a couple days so you can actually like try to work your magic. And once he leaves, Votarius ran into Anselmus' wife again, and she's like, my husband just left. He just got on his horse and he left. He didn't say goodbye to me. He didn't kiss me goodbye. Like, none of this. This is what's going on with him. And Votarius is like, well, you know, if, if he's not going to kiss you goodbye, then let me do it on his behalf. And he goes like he's going to kiss her. And she's like, no, 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 no. And he's like, aha, so she is faithful. Um, but then she continues on and she's like, you know, he, he really should be kissing me himself. Like, I appreciate the offer, but he really should be kissing me himself because he's my husband. And Votarius says, I would he do it then and ne'er trouble me in it. But madam, you perceive he takes the course to be far off from that. He's rode from home, but his unkindness stays and keeps with you. Let whose will please his wife. He rides his horse. That's all the care he takes. I pity you, madam. You have an unpleasing lord. Would twere not so. I should rejoice with you. You're young. The very springs upon you now. The roses on your cheeks are but new blown. Take you together. You are a pleasant garden, where all the sweetness of man's comfort breathes. But what is it to be a work of beauty, and want the heart that should delight in you? You still retain your goodness in yourselves, but then you lose your glory, which is all. The grace of every benefit is the use, and is not pity you should want your grace. Look you like one whose lord should walk in groves about the peace of midnight? Alas, madam, tis to me wondrous how you should spare the day from amorous clips, much less the general season when all the world's a gamester. That face deserves a friend of heart and spirit, discourse and motion, indeed such a one that should observe you madam, without ceasing, and not a weary lord." So he's cranking up the flirting here. He's, he's very, very much flattering her. Uh, the first line is a bit of a, an aside. He's like, I wish he would have just kissed her before he left, and then I wouldn't have to deal with all this stuff. But then he turns to her, and he's like, you know, that's very unkind of him to leave and leave his unkindness here with you. That's too bad that you have him. It, it would be nicer if you had somebody that really appreciated you, like maybe I would, because you're young and you're beautiful. And, but what good is it to be beautiful when the person that you love doesn't love you back? Like you should be able to, to enjoy these things. You don't deserve a man who just goes walking by himself in the middle of the night. And like somebody that looks like you could have anybody that you want. I mean, everybody around here would be, you know, happy to be with you. <laughs> and he's like, you deserve that. You deserve somebody who isn't going to leave your side, somebody that's going to be there for you and, and appreciate you. And as the two of them continue talking, he actually starts sort of falling for her. And it might be because of this monologue where he has to come up with all of this stuff. But then he's like, actually, she she is really beautiful. And maybe it would be nice to be with her. And oh, and they, he left, but he wants me to do this thing and I can't do it. And at the same time, she's getting so flattered by him that she starts to become tempted. So the two of them start having these asides while they're, you know, they're talking to each other in little bits. 
like, you know, you're, you're nice and he left on his horse and you deserve better and all these sorts of things. But they're having these asides where she's like, why is he sitting here tempting me? And he's like, why am I sitting here all tempted? And he's like, you know what? I, he's like, I have to just get out of this. I, I need to not be around her because I'm too tempted. I'm going to do something. And he's like, I'm never going to see you again, madam. And, and he goes to leave and she's like, ah, she's, she's very excited at this point. And she calls in her serving woman, uh, Leonella, and she's like, I need you to not ever leave my side again. You can't leave me by myself, especially with my husband gone. There might be people that like want to bribe you so that they can get a little bit of time alone with me. And Leonella's like, is there someone specific that you're thinking of? And she's like, v Votarius, you need to keep Votarius away from me. Like, don't ever leave my side. I can't, I can't be away from him. And like, this isn't a weird thing for me to be asking of my servant, serving woman. People ask this sort of thing all the time. And Leonella's like, okay, okay, you know, I'll, I'll take care of it. And then Selma's wife leaves, at which point Leonella turns and calls in her boyfriend, Belarius, and she's like, hey, we're not gonna have to sneak around anymore because I know some dirt that's gonna make it so that you and I can like be public with our love and we can walk around and, and nobody's gonna know anything. And he's like, you know, what's going on? And she's like, my lady is tempted to, you know, since, since Anselmus is away, my lady is a little bit tempted. And he's like, well, by anybody specifically? And she's like, Votarius. And he's like, oh, he's my enemy. And she's like, well, then obviously, you know, if he's your enemy, then I'm not going to let him have his way with her because that, you know, I'm not going to do anything to help your enemy get what he wants. And Belarius is like, no, actually, it'll be even worse for him if he does get an opportunity to sleep with her because then we'll be able to blackmail them. We'll know all this stuff. We'll, it'll pull their relationship apart, all this sort of stuff. And she's like, okay, then we'll set it up so that Votarius can sleep with, with my lady, with Anselma's wife. And they're like, okay, cool, good plan. And that's the end of act one, scene two. So what started out is like, your nice little rom-com fake dating situation, like a she's all that sort of thing, is turning into actual feelings developing for both Anselma's wife and Votarius, which is now also blackmail material for Anselma's wife's servant and her boyfriend. So things are getting, I mean, it is called the second maiden's tragedy. It's not supposed to be like all fun and games and happy hunky-dory stuff, right? Anyway, We'll see how this all starts to pan out when you come on back tomorrow for more. I'll see you then. Mwah.